This is the Mental Metal Podcast, and I am your host, Coach Matt Toman. I'm a former athlete, teacher, coach, and athletic director that switched careers after surviving cancer and a stroke in the fall of 2020. But I'm also a dad of a son and a daughter that were successful high school athletes that went on to college. Now I use that experience along with my ICF coaching certification when helping teams, coaches, and athletes from all over the country. Each week, I will pose a specific question that will help coaches of all types better understand mental toughness. In the Mental Metal Podcast, coaches will learn to help their athletes overcome adversity without being the adversity they need to overcome. Coaches, do you dream of guiding mentally tough athletes towards a championship? Kids that are resilient, persistent, and unshaken by setbacks. Well, in today's world, those athletes aren't born. They have to be developed. Many athletes face significant challenges and risk burnout. So how do we foster that mental toughness without overwhelming them? Well, introducing the Ember to Inferno program, Building Mentally Tough Athletes. This series is designed specifically for coaches, offering a deep dive into your own journey of mental toughness and equipping you with practical tools to build confidence and belief in your athletes. Rather than just simply adding more adversity to their life, we focus on creating a strong foundation for mental resilience. You'll learn how to transform a spark of motivation into a blazing fire of toughness using techniques that address challenges like social media pressures, athletic stress, and trauma. Don't just wish for mentally tough athletes. Build them. Join the Ember to Inferno program today and ignite the potential in your athletes. For more information, contact me, Coach Toman, at Mental Metal Coaching. Parents, is your athlete ready for the upcoming sports season? They might have the strength, the speed, and the skills, but without confidence, they could still struggle when the game is online. Skill and strength are great. They're necessary, but they're not used to their full potential without the right mentality. Confidence is key. It's the key to unlocking that full potential. And at Mental Metal Coaching, I offer personalized sessions designed to build the confidence your athlete needs for a successful season. My proven techniques empower them to perform under pressure both on the field and in life. Don't let a lack of confidence hold them back. Book a free session today and discover the power of confidence. Visit the website and get started on the journey to a more confident, and successful athlete with mental metal coaching. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Mental Metal Podcast. I'm your host, Coach Matt Toman. As always, thanks for listening. Thanks for joining. Thanks for liking. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for everything. It uh, means a lot to me to be able to put out this podcast and I couldn't do that without listeners. Um, it's nice to have People sending notes, sharing, liking, seeing all that stuff. So I really appreciate it. So today is a solo episode. So, but don't turn off. I don't have a guest today, but uh, I'm going to try and do this a little bit more. Some of the ideas that it's good for me to pause and pick up. I'm always learning, and I'm uh, you know in the in the coaching sessions that I do with individuals, uh, the professional development I do when I go to schools having the conversations with athletes, coaches, I'm always picking up stuff. And then of course, every time I do this podcast, uh, I love putting the information out there so people can learn and hear things and, and just find ways to be better. But it, it's for me as well. I just pick up so many things and it's just, it's always got my brain working. And, uh, the last solo episode I did was on mindset and just how to have a growth mindset uh, versus a fixed mindset and just how important that is. And if you didn't check that one, it's a really good one, especially if you've got younger athletes, it's good for anybody. If, cause if you don't have it, you know, even if you're older, if you don't have the growth mindset, it's, there's never too late to change, but it's easier as we know with anything, it's easier to develop something when we're young. So if we have that, if we've developed that growth mindset in young athletes and young in our kids and players and stuff like that, it's just, it serves them more. Uh, and they're able to do that for longer and, you know, accomplish more. Uh, this today's episode is a little bit of a, uh, continuation on that. 
uh, the ideas have some similarities, but it's not just about growth mindset. Uh, I want. I got thinking about another because I got thinking about another book that I really like. Uh, the last one was on mindset by Carol Dweck, and I got thinking of another book uh, called Grit by Angela Duckworth. Another one, I think any coach, anybody who's trying to succeed and you know achieve greatness and some things like that, um, it's another book everybody should read. But as much I like. There's something with grit. I like it, and I'm going to talk about it here. But I, th I think that we need to go beyond it because, uh, well, I'll get into it. But uh, it's not that I don't like the book. I, I love the book, but I just felt like it added some more. But let's, it needed a little bit more in in the things that I see, uh, mostly because the idea of grit. And we're going to talk about what grit is. Grit is this, you know, this very tough, resilient perseverance, right? No matter what you keep going a little bit like mental toughness. Uh, but it's, it's a skill, right? And it's like a lot of these things we're talking about, it takes time to develop. So it's easy to like, when you read the book that she gives these great examples of grit and how important it is and how useful it is and stuff like that. But if you don't have grit, you're kind of left reading it like, well, okay, that's fantastic, but I'm, I know I'm not very gritty and I tend to want to quit things. What am I supposed to do? So it leaves you, uh, with these great ideas, but then you're like, I don't know how to do that. So, um, that's kind of what I'm want to, uh, add to this is, you know, how do you develop that? How you, how do you keep going? And what I came up with this idea, I love any times I can get some alliteration going and some words and little wordplay. And I realized that if you want to be great, if you want to see growth, and I'm all about growth. So as a coach, my job is transformation, about getting people from point A to point B, from where they are to where they want to be. Well, that's, that's, that's growth, right? So my job is growth. Now, a lot of growth just happens, right? It's, we should all, if you're trying at all, you should have some growth in your life, right? You just... You just get better at your job or you just, if you're young and you grow up and stuff, there should be growth. But what we're always trying to do is find ways to expediate that, right? Like grow a little bit more and a little bit faster and a little, like make the process not easier, but achieve more, like grow even more. And I realized an idea I like, if you need growth, if you want to grow, there's three gers that you need. So we need the growth, but you need three gers. One of them is grit, one of them is grace, and one of them is gratitude. All right? So those are the three gers of growth. And every time I say that, I can only come up with one of my favorite movies, Austin Powers, when he says, ger, baby, very ger, right? That idea. I don't know if that applies here. It probably doesn't, but it always makes me think of that. But anyway, these are the three gers I'm going to talk about today. So let's talk and, and, and how to use those in combination to get growth. Okay. So let's start with grit. All right. So like I said, it's a great book. Not that she invented the word or anything, but Angela Duckworth, great book called Grit. Just about how she, and, and she's a psychologist, did a lot of research and sent him what she started finding was that all the people that she saw in these different walks of life that were really, really successful, the one thing that she noticed they had in common in was grit. It wasn't talent. It was grit, which is that perseverance. She calls it a combination of passion and perseverance over the long term. And it makes sense. So it's heavily focused on the growth mindset. They're, they're not one and the same, but they're real close. And Grit is has a huge focus on effort over talent, which is definitely something we talked about with with growth mindset and how the idea of we need to teach how to praise effort rather than talent, right? And that's something we talked about with young individuals, like try not to praise their genetic gifts. Oh, you're so fast. You're so strong. You're so smart. Like intelligence can be developed. So can like speed and strength, but we're talking about when we're doing it, like if you got a, a first grader coming in and they're just like passing every test and doing everything, that's, it's probably, they've been maybe reading with parents at home, but a lot of it is just ge a genetic gift, right? So we've got to be very careful to not praise that, or they think the only thing that matters is something they just already have. We want to praise the effort. And that's what this is all about. So 
we have to learn how to focus on the importance of effort over talent. That's how we start to develop grit. And there's some other factors in grit that are really important. If you want to be gritty in an idea, the first one is uh, obviously you have to have interest in what you're gritty about. Okay. I know that sounds silly, but let's be honest. If you don't care about something, a a, you know, a pursuit, it's impossible to be gritty, right? It has to be have something you have somewhat, some level of interest in. Uh, if you, you know, it's, it goes to that idea. If you ever, you know, if you enjoy your job, you never have to lo- uh, work a day in your in your life, right? It's that idea. So there has to be some level of interest in something and able to, for us to be able to be gritty. If we're talking about athletics, usually that's not too hard, right? We got a kid that uh, wants to play sports, basketball, baseball, volleyball, whatever. Um, it's probably something they have interest in. The second part you have to have to be gritty is you have to have a purpose, a sense of meaning in what you do. Another way to say it, they like, what is your why? This can be tricky, especially if we're talking about a kid. They just, they just know it's fun. All right. Uh, so that's something we develop as they get older. We have to have an idea of why you're doing what you're doing. And honestly, that goes, again, I know I'm trying to apply this with athletes and things like that, but this is something we definitely want to apply to our own jobs, lives, things like that. You have to know your why. You have to have a bigger purpose. If you're just doing it for a self-centered reason, it, it might not be enough right? Because sometimes we don't think of ourselves quite like we do others. So it's almost like we have to be doing it for, it really helps if we do it for other reasons. It could be as simple as, um, I know a lot of people do what they do. Uh, it's one of my, my favorite Bible verse up here, Galatians, Galatians 3.23, whatever, I, whatever you do, do it as though working for the Lord and not for have human masters. So it's that idea. It's like, hey, I, I love what I'm doing. And my why is I, I want to serve God when I'm doing it. Not everybody, it's, you know, religious and going to do that. But the the trick is you have to have a reason why you're doing what you're doing. And if you can do it for something other than yourself, that's really helpful as well. The other thing that grit takes is a whole lot of practice. So, you, you know, you have to have that interest and that purpose because you have to put in a lot of practice. And I mean, a lot of hours. Um, I forget which Malcolm Gladwell book it is, but he talks about the 10,000 hours. Like if you want to be really great and be an elite in something, it's 10,000 hours of practice, like a lots of practice. That's what, that's what grit is, is having that something that you enjoy, that you have a reason for doing it. And you just put time in over and over and over again. Um, it helps when we're talking about the interest, it helps if it's something that you enjoy enough that you actually experience what they call flow. That idea of you're doing something and it doesn't feel like work and you lose track of time and you just really enjoy what you're doing. That's really helpful, but it's not always that cut and dried. So, um, but regardless, when we talk about that 10,000 hours and putting in that much practice, grit is a long-term idea. Like, a lot of times we watch somebody perform or an athlete do something and we can say, Oh, they're really gritty. And I, I don't, it's not that I don't like that term, but grit is a, is a long-term idea. Like you have to see somebody really working for a long time and seeing them grow and overcome struggles and being resilient. That's what grit is. Now, as I said, Grit is extremely important for greatness. And that's what Angela Duckworth saw. And she, that book has all sorts of really, really good examples from, you know, uh, sports to music to all sorts of things, just gritty people that really put in the extra effort and the time. And that's what she sees as, you know, she's looking at the success. So these people at the top that have gotten there, what do they all have in common? They all have that grit. Well, the problem is grit is fantastic. It's a huge factor in greatness, but it takes, it's not everybody's born with grit and it takes time to develop. And, you know, it's almost like you have to be gritty just to develop more grit, right? So it's like, you don't just say, I'm wake up one day, I'm going to be gritty. It's, it, 
there's a lot of failure there and it, it's hard sometimes. You just have to keep going. It's this long-term idea. And a lot of people get frustrated with the lack of process, with progress. And that can happen even more when it's like something that you don't have all that much interest in or you t are taking time to develop interest in or you don't know your why. That makes it even worse. But even when you do, these you know, this being gritty, just, it, it takes so much that it's hard not to lose, lose hope at some point. Right. And I think that that's where these other two gers that I'm going to add really help. Okay. The idea that grit, again, this is not just you open a package and you have grit. Like it's, it's not that easy. There's other gers that you have to practice as you're developing this grit and working on your way to success and then seeing this growth. And the first one is grace. Parents of athletes know that confidence and belief are fundamental for success. We want them to play without fear and without anxiety, but once those negative thoughts take over, it can derail years of work. Turning that anxiety into belief is similar to building strength and speed. It just takes intentional effort over time. Mental Metal Coaching provides the individual drills needed to build the positive mindset necessary for success on the court and in life. Contact today to schedule a free coaching session and start building mental toughness in your athlete. So in addition to being gritty, if you want grit to work, you have to have some grace. When I'm talking about grace, I'm talking about for yourself and giving yourself some grace. It's about having forgiveness and acceptance along that way, along the way when, when you're trying to succeed. And this, this seems like the one idea that is some people are the most resistant to. It, it's very common for people in some pursuit to just, you know, never give themselves grace because all they're going to knock, all they're going to talk about is what I can't do, what I haven't done, what I've not accomplished. And they think that if they give themselves a little bit forgiveness or acceptance on where they are, that means they're not pushing themselves hard enough. And we hear that all the time when people say, well, I'm my hardest critic. I'm my harshest critic. And I've had some other podcasts where I talk about the negative and positive voice. If you go back, I did a two part series, three part series for parents. That second one was all about the inner voice. The inner voice is a killer, right? So grace is about using that positive voice as motivation rather than using that negative voice for motivation. One of the things when I work with a new client, I work, always work on these assumptions. Okay. It's, it's part of the coaching process. You make these assumptions and to, to set up the conversation. And so, you know, how things are going to work. And these are good assumptions, not bad assumptions. You know, we always, you know, you, you gotta be careful when you assume, right? Uh, these are good assumptions or challenging assumptions, like things I'm going to challenge you of. And one of the things I always say when I'm working with a new client is I need you to understand, I need you to assume and understand that you are whole. And when I, tell people that what I mean is there's nothing wrong with you. It's, it's when you're work on any time, we still have this resistance. A lot of times when we're working with somebody in the mental health field, like going to a coach counselor, something like that. It's like, and it keeps people from going to therapy and to coaching because they're like, well, I don't want to, I don't want to feel like something's wrong with me. Well, there's nothing wrong with you. Right. And that's one of the things I want people to understand is you are whole dot, dot, dot. However, you're also not perfect, right? And that's, to me, uh, that's the, and I don't want to get too philosophical here, but to me, that's the secret of life is to be able to accept that you are whole and there's nothing wrong with you, but yet also you're not perfect. And I feel like we got to live in that space. I'd be like, Hey, I love me. I love the way I am, but I'm also looking how to change it. And that's tricky, right? Because it's, it's like, it's a very fine line, right? We, we get too accepting of ourselves and we get 
soft and we get easy and we don't ever change anything. But if the other way, we push ourselves way too hard and we want to quit, we want to give up and we don't give ourselves any grace. And that's not good either. So we've got to find that middle ground and it's tricky. It's a, you know, and when I say it's a fine line, it's a fine line to walk and you step off of it from time to time. Uh, but you have to be able to have that acceptance for yourself. What I'm talking about when I'm talking about acceptance for yourself, you've got to have, you've got to be able to accept your abilities and your limitations. We want to try and change our limitations, but that doesn't mean we don't exist, don't believe that they exist, right? Uh, I know the things that I that I struggle with, and that's okay. And I'm try, I'm always trying to work on them, but that doesn't mean I don't ignore them, right? But in the same way, I, I always have to be able to accepting of my abilities, good and bad. So it is just to be and to be able to do this is again tricky. If you do it in the wrong way, it can get real negative. But grace allows you to do this in this very positive way. Uh, anytime that we're after some growth, I, I run to a lot of people that use a negative voice as that motivator. And I find that the negative voice can be a really good short term motivator. They use shame. They can use like comparison to others. Uh, they can use like things that people have said negative about them. And they use that as a motivator. And you can, it can really motivate you for a while. But I find it to be a negative, uh, a short term motivator with long term results not always good, right? So short-term progress, long-term damage, whenever you use that negative voice. Well, we are looking about the long-term here. Remember, grit is a long-term thing. Growth is a long-term thing. We have to use a voice that is not doing long-term damage. And again, go back to my other podcast, Read On Your Own using a negative voice over and over and over again is definitely a negative long-term has negative long-term effects. Okay. So giving yourself grace and speaking to yourself in a positive voice is better for the long-term. Now, what does that mean? Like using yourself, give, using your voice, giving yourself grace. Well, honestly, one of the things is just giving yourself a break when you need it. We're trying to grow over time. It's the old thing about it's a marathon, not a marathon, not a sprint, right? Taking a break is not quitting, right? Taking a break is taking a break, knowing that I'm going to get right back at it. You, you, you not get knocked down. It can take a second to get back up but know that you're going to get back up. And when I say that about the difference between taking a break is not quitting is because I think some people use absolutes in their pursuits and they talk about, Hey, I'm never going to let this happen. I'm never going to let that happen. I'm always going to do this. Uh, this is always going to be the case. And then when something happens that goes against that absolute, you, you say, I'm never going to do this. I'm never going to do this. And then you do it. Or if you say, I'm always going to do this. I'm always going to do this. And then all of a sudden you don't, then it can sometimes make people want to quit and say, I'm, I'm done. If you give yourself grace, you see setbacks and failures for what they are is just steps in the process. Right. Uh, we, I talked a couple episodes ago with my buddy, Dan Cox, and he was talking about uh, that 75 hard. And some of you may heard about that. And and I think it's it's good for some people, right? They say, because it but it definitely deals in those absolutes, right? It's it's something about I'm always I'm gonna do always do two workouts a day. I'm always gonna set on this meal plan, I'm always gonna do this, and it's got these ideas. And if you have to if you fail, you gotta restart, right? And that's fine. If you're like I said, if you're already gritty, it's a great practice. But what if you're not very gritty, right? 
you might say, I'm going to do this 75 hard and you make it to day 30 and you have a slip up. Do you just like, if you really see that as this huge failure, then you might be willing to just quit and say, I guess that's just not me. Right. It'd be much better for you to just say, Hey, I'm going to this. These are what I'm, these are my guidelines. I'm going to work towards. I'm always going to keep going, knowing that I'm going to have some slip ups, giving yourself some grace. And again, I'm not knocking the 75 hard. I think it's a great idea. A lot of people do it. But again, if that's not where you are, you, you got to know that grit takes some time to develop. And for that, you got to have a little bit of grace. And because grace means accepting those mistakes and those failures, right? The growth, the, the biggest misconception about growth, if we're going to look at this, the old school timeline, right? Where you got time on the X axis and, and abilities over on the Y axis is that it's this straight line and it's nothing of a straight line. It is up and down and up and down and up and down. And we only hope that we can hit that trend line button and see that it's trending up. The peaks, the valleys, all of those things are going to be there, right? If, if it's not, because that's the thing, if it's, if you don't have those peaks and valleys in your pursuit, your pursuit's not hard enough, right? Your, what you're trying to accomplish is not hard enough. You have to have that failure because that failure is what allows us to learn, it's the, the cheesiest thing ever that coaches say is that idea of, I don't, I don't, if we either lose or we either win, I, I don't lose, I learn or something like that. You know, I don't win. If we don't win, we learn something like that. And I know it's cheesy and stuff, but it's the truth. And I think we have to have that mindset and we have to be able to do that. Um, and the other thing about what grace does when we're talking about this is grace helps us mitigate burnout. So we are looking to build, if we're doing a metaphor of a fire and this, uh, this grit and this growth and stuff, we're, if, if our metaphor is a fire, we're, we're trying to tend to fire for long-term growth. We're not trying to have a fire that just burns out fast. Like a, you know, the thing about a meteoric rise when somebody gets, you know, takes out of the gate and does great is that things burn out, right? We don't really want to be like a firecracker where we light that fuse and then it's, oh, it's great and it's bright and it's, oh, it's awesome. And then it's, it's ash in like seconds. We're talking about long term. And that's the thing we have to keep reminding ourselves about grit and practicing this grace. It is a long term thing. So that grace really helps us mitigate that, that burnout. And that can look like a, a lot of things. Like, it, it happens a lot with athletes. I hear it all the time with kids and even in high school, they're like, well, I, I'm just, I'm burned out and I don't want to do it. And I think that we create that sometimes as coaches, whenever we have too much of a focus on the results and not the growth. So if a kid isn't winning and we aren't seeing the success that they want, it's easy to get burned out. Right? But if you give it yourself, some grace and saying, Hey, I'm, but I'm getting better, but I'm getting better. It's good. Um, it's all part of it. So it, it helps mitigate that, mitigate that burnout. Um, so that's what we need that, that grace. And then the second or the, 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 the third GER or the second GER that we need to help solidify that, that grit is probably my favorite and it's gratitude. Coaches, do you dream of guiding mentally tough athletes towards a championship? Kids that are resilient, persistent, and unshaken by setbacks. Well, in today's world, those athletes aren't born. They have to be developed. Many athletes face significant challenges and risk burnout. So how do we foster that mental toughness without overwhelming them? Well, introducing the Ember to Inferno program, Building Mentally Tough Athletes. This series is designed specifically for coaches, offering a deep dive into your own journey of mental toughness and equipping you with practical tools to build confidence and belief in your athletes. Rather than just simply 
adding more adversity to their life, we focus on creating a strong foundation for mental resilience. You'll learn how to transform a spark of motivation into a blazing fire of toughness using techniques that address challenges like social media pressures, athletic stress, and trauma. Don't just wish for mentally tough athletes. Build them. Join the Ember to Inferno program today and ignite the potential in your athletes. For more information, contact me, Coach Toman, at Mental Metal Coaching. Parents, is your athlete ready for the upcoming sports season? They might have the strength, the speed, and the skills, but without confidence, they could still struggle when the game is online. Skill and strength are great. They're necessary, but they're not used to their full potential without the right mentality. Confidence is key. It's the key to unlocking that full potential. And at Mental Metal Coaching, I offer personalized sessions designed to build the confidence your athlete needs for a successful season. My proven techniques empower them to perform under pressure both on the field and in life. Don't let a lack of confidence hold them back. Book a free session today and discover the power of confidence. Visit the website and get started on the journey to a more confident and successful athlete with mental metal coaching. There's a there's a saying from uh, a famous philosopher named Cicero, and I a lot of times when I'm reading and doing stuff, I ran across this quote, and it says, um, "Gratitude is not only the greatest of all virtues." but it is the parent of all others. I didn't used to get that. And I'm going to say it again so that you get it. Gratitude is not only the greatest of all virtues, it is the parent of all others. When you think about what he's saying there, he's saying that gratitude is like the best character trait we can have. Gratitude. It is just a fantastic thing to practice. But not only that, what he's saying is you can't develop other characteristics well unless you have gratitude. And that was a new idea for me. I was always somewhat of a gracious person. And like, I mean, I say thank you like other people and stuff and would be, you know, somewhat gracious and grateful for the things I have. But it was only after uh, I got into, after my stroke and getting into coaching and stuff like this, that I really started to practice gratitude that I started to see what he was talking about. It helps me develop all sorts of other traits practicing this gratitude. And it's probably the A number one thing. It's always anytime I work with a new client, that first that first session, we start with a little bit of a gratitude excess that exercise that I want them to keep up because it is so important. Um the thing about gratitude is once you start practicing, you start to realize that gratitude does more for the giver than it does the receiver. We all know that being shown some gratitude, somebody notices something we did for them and says, thank you. It makes us feel good. Uh, we enjoy that, right? Because sometimes we feel like it doesn't happen enough. So when we do have some gratitude, it makes us feel good. Over the long term, saying, practicing gratitude and giving gratitude to someone else actually does more for me than it does receiving gratitude. And it's so weird. It's It's this thing that like one of the most selfish things you can do for yourself is to practice gratitude towards others. And if if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's because you haven't really rolled with like that and and but you should practice it because it's great. And and you might say, well, I don't really understand that or why is that? And the thing is, is because you can't practice gratitude without having a positive mindset. In order for you to practice gratitude you have to be focusing on things that are going well for you or things that people are doing for you or things that are happening well for you. Gratitude is about giving thanks for the good things in your life, right? So for you to practice gratitude, it means you have to be noticing positive things, right? So 
if you aren't practicing gratitude, part of the reasons you probably aren't is because you're focused on the negatives and that's a downward spiral that's no good. If you start to, even if you're not, if you don't have a positive mindset now, you start practicing gratitude and it will start sparking those ideas of looking for positivity. One of the best exercises, and this is one of them that I always have for clients to do, and I've probably said it on this podcast before, is something called the three good things exercise. And it is created by a guy named Martin Seligman. He's the father of positive psychology. It's a great exercise. Even he says, this is one of the best exercises you can do for yourself. And I like to, I like to suggest that you do it with someone else, an accountability partner, a spouse, a kid, somebody, but you do something called uh, the three good things exercise. And what you do is at the end of every day, you, you just pick out three things that went really well, three things that you're thankful for things that you did and, and why you're thankful for them. And it can be really simple. Um, it, I, when I work with kids, um, they're like, well, I don't know what to do. I'm like, you, you have to be able to find three things, right? It could be, Hey, my mom made, I don't know, tuna melts for dinner. And I like tuna melts. I like tuna melts. You may not, but anyway, my mom made tuna melts for dinner. I'm thankful that I have a mom that makes, knows I like tuna melts and made them for him. That's one, right? The second one could be like, Hey, I, I passed a, a math test today. It was easier than I thought I'd studied and it worked well. That was great. The third one would be, you know, something like, Hey, practice today was hard, but I did well. And I feel good for being able to do that. It's things that you're thankful for that you're able to do, accomplish, whatever. And I talk about this one on one of my, one of that last, uh, that, that three-part parent C series. That's one of the best things I think parents can do whenever they get into a car after a game, when they don't know what to talk about and they're worried, they're like, oh, this is a good game, bad game. We don't know. We don't, but sometimes there's some tough conversations that happen in the car on the way home after practicing games. And parents always ask me, I don't know how to talk to them. I don't know what to say. Uh, this three good things exercise is a great one. Like you just tell your kid three good things, three things that you were thankful for during that game and ask them to do the same. And if you do nothing else, I think that is a great start for how to talk to your kid after a game. And then once you start to do this and you start to practice this gratitude and finding these positives in your life, it's really easy, not easier, but it's able to, it's able to change your mindset on yourself, right? And start noticing the positives in your life. And you can start picking up the things that you are getting better at. And that's so important for growth. Okay. Greatness. A lot of times whenever I was talking about, okay, why do you do what you do? Or, you know, having something that you like to do, it's great. And we have these, these ideas of these grand things that we're supposed to accomplish. And that's fine because if the, I don't think if we had those big goals, a lot of, we wouldn't chase things. It's good to have dreams. And you're know, like, it could be a kid. I'm like, I want to get a division one scholarship or I'm going to, you know, win this championship. I don't want to do this. And I'm all for that. Oh, but a lot of those things focus on controllables that they can't control. And it, and you may not ever actually get the opportunity to get those things or do those things. But even if you achieve the great thing that you wanted, greatness is a series of, well, 10,000 hours or so of little small steps. And if you just go into every situation just focused on this thing that was that is years and years and years in the future, it's easy to lose hope. It's easy to quit. You don't give yourself grace because you're not where you want to be right now, right? If you if you say, "Hey, I I have a goal. I want to be here in five years," and then you wake up the next day and you're not there and you're upset, well, what did you expect? And if you were able to achieve, you know, your five-year goal in like two months, well, then your five-year goal wasn't enough. Like it should be hard. It should be way in the future and it should take thousands of little steps. The problem is where we lose heart is that if we don't 
give ourselves gratitude for the things we've done and the things that we've accomplished, we don't keep working. So that gratitude is huge. You've got to have that positive mindset looking every day at the things you've done well and give yourself gratitude and say, hey, thanks for putting the work in. Talking to yourself, that positive mindset, that positive voice. Thank yourself for taking those little steps, noticing the things that you've done well and that you're improving, that you are improving on. Um, it's, it's, it's just a gratitude is just a practice you have to give and practice on yourself and give yourself thanks for doing that. If grace and gratitude are two ideas that when I say this, feel weird, you're not alone. Giving yourself grace and giving yourself a break and taking it a little bit easier on yourself or thanking yourself for working hard and noticing the things you've done well. If those seem strange for you, you're not alone. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't do them. That doesn't mean you shouldn't try them. You have to start practicing them even before they feel right. Like it's good. As you start doing it, you're going to be like, this doesn't feel like me. This doesn't sound like me. Yeah. Well, you're trying to do something you haven't done before and you're trying to act in a different way. It's like, uh, if you started to go, you know, if you're a golfer or changing something on your shot on your three free throw, and you're trying to develop a new, you know, muscle memory, what it feels weird at first, this is no different. If you're trying to practice grace and gratitude, it's going to feel a little bit strange at first. It just is. You have to get past that. You have to get past the awkward. Learn how to practice grace and gratitude and get past that weird feeling. And, you know, forget what you've told yourself before that you shouldn't give yourself grace and you can't give yourself thanks. Like, forget those things because I think that you have to have those things on your way becoming great and you have to have those things to be able to practice grit the way you want to. All right. So, yeah, so that's the, that's the, that's the GERS, I think for growth, the three GERS of, gr of growth, you've got to have, you've got to develop that grit and practice that grit over a long period of time. You've got to give yourself grace, understand that mistakes happen, problems happen, failures happen, give yourself some grace and practice that gratitude. Start giving yourself thanks for the work you've done, the progress you've made, and for others as well. Keep doing that, practicing that gratitude and finding that positivity in your life and leaning into it. It's there, just using it. Those are the three GERS. Um, hopefully it makes sense to you. It's it's just something that, again, I kind of picked up with as I was working with different coaches and here and doing some seminars and stuff. And I thought, I just like the play on words with, with the GERS and I think it's really good. And honestly, it's, it's something I work with, um, with my athletes. If any of this sounds good, right? When I work with individual athletes and I do the mental coaching with athletes, this is definitely the things that we're going to work on. We're always working on that mental toughness and getting them better, but we don't just, you know, it doesn't do me any good for me to just say, Hey, Oh, you just need to be more mentally tough. All right. Okay. That's not how, that's not how it works. We start giving them some tools to do that. But then in the meantime, I tell them to be able to give themselves some grace, understand that failures happen, but to keep going and also to give them the self thanks and some gratitude on the work that they've done. Those are the keys to be able to develop that grit. You have to have those. So anytime that we're, I'm working with an individual, that's how, that's how we're doing it. Right. And it's, it is, it's a slow process, but there's no quick fixes when it comes to mindset. It takes time. You need to start working this. I do the same thing when I go in and I talk to schools and I talk to teams and I do those. We're always talking about that. Giving yourself that grace, that gratitude and, and, and accepting what you are, but always trying to get better. It is not a, it is not a sign of weakness to give yourself some grace and give yourself a break. It is, it is, it, it is how you do things long-term, right? Because everybody fails, everybody gets knocked down. So you have to be able to accept that and keep going. Otherwise you want to quit. Otherwise you want to burn out. Okay. So 
those are the three gurs of growth, grit, grace, and gratitude. I hope you like that. Uh, send me, if you like that, you like what I'm saying, send me a note, send me a, send me an email, you know, like it, share it, tell me what you think about it and, uh, tell me where I'm wrong. I'd love to hear that. Uh, if you, if you hear this and you're like, dude, no, this is not going to work. I would love to hear it. I, you know, we don't need to get in a big, uh, argument on Facebook or anything, but send me a message. We'll, uh, we'll talk about it. We'll see what we can do. And I, I'd love to know where I'm wrong, where you think I'm wrong. How, how, you know, uh, just, Show me the error of my ways if you want. I'm not being arrogant about that, but because I'm not saying I know everything, but uh, I'd love to. I'd love to dive into this. Anybody else, if they want to, so I'd love it. So, thanks for listening. Thanks for joining. Thanks for liking. Thanks for sharing. Um, this has been the Mental Metal Podcast. I'm your host, Coach Matt Toman, and always remember, forge your metal. Mental Metal Coaching is driven by a passion for sharing knowledge and experience that will allow athletes and coaches to grow, play, and live in a positive way. We offer a range of coaching and professional development services. First and foremost, we offer individual mental coaching for athletes, and it's easily the most efficient and effective way to help athletes replace fear and anxiety with positivity and confidence. Mental Metal Coaching has helped middle school setters to high school lacrosse middies to D1 offensive linemen. If you have an athlete that needs to improve their mindset and athletics, mental coaching is the answer. We also offer team coaching, which uses the same concepts as individual mental coaching, but applies them in a group setting. Team bonding outings are great, but they do nothing to address the thoughts and feelings that can derail a team. Team coaching does address that, and it's a great option for helping your team grow. Finally, Mental Metal Coaching offers social emotional learning professional development programs for educators and coaches. There are self paced online programs, there are virtual coaching options, and even in person seminars available. This PD will help increase the mental health of your staff and eventually your student athletes and the culture of your school. All of the mental metal coaching programs have the same goal. Our mission is to help athletes and coaches develop a resilient and spirited mindset that will help them confidently face any obstacles or challenges they seek, regardless of their situation. If you would like to see the same in your athlete, your team, and your staff, contact Coach Toman for more information. Thanks again for listening to The Mental Metal Podcast, produced by Coraggio Media, sponsored by QuickCut, a video management platform for every level of play, and by Mental Metal Coaching, helping athletes learn to face adversity in a spirited and resilient way. The Mental Metal Podcast is created each week to help players develop more mental toughness, and that is something that will help all of us. So help me out and like and share the Mental Metal Podcast with your friends. Until next time, keep forging your metal.